goes. This is it. This is the final episode. And that was it. A clip from Jon Stewart's goodbye, his final Daily Show appearance Thursday night. Pop culture expert Brian Baltazar joins us now to take a look at some of the more memorable moments and the legacy Stewart leaves behind. Hi, Brian. Great to see you. Good to see you. So first off, this was a pre-taped show, so I think some viewers may have been a little disappointed that none of the GOP debate that had just ended got worked into the show. Right. What a night to do this. Yeah. In fact, they tried to make it sound as though they were going to talk about the debate, but it ended up kind of being a way to introduce all the amazing correspondents that have been on this show and then really reflect on the power of this show and the careers it's it's created for folks like Ed Helms. Uh, right. the, the list goes on. Stephen Colbert, you know, it's Which amazing. It's been so significant. Yeah. yeah, all the correspondents, past and present, who made mm -hmm. cameos. Let's talk about Stephen Colbert's for a second because it sounds like he went off script. We're going to roll did. a bit of yeah, it Yeah, let's take a look. We owe you, and not just what you did for our career by employing us to come on this tremendous show that you made. We owe you because we learned from you. We learned from you, by example, how to do a show with intention, how to work with clarity, how to treat people with respect. You are infuriatingly good at your job, okay? Tears yeah, I spied. That was an interesting moment because he had tossed a break and then Stephen said, hey, 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 I gotta stop you. So they could have edited that out because yes. he, has, uh, he has not been very self-congratulatory or he's been very humble. And this show even was more of a thank you to his team and to the talented people around him. So this was, I think, one of the more authentic moments on the show that is often kind of tongue in cheek and, and sticky and fun. But he really, I think, w was very humbled by that. And I, th I think it was the best moment in the show. I think so too. It felt yeah. very genuine. Yeah. Another part that I really enjoyed was when he gave viewers the backstage sort of behind the scenes tour right. of the entire team that makes this show happen. It gives you a sense of just how much work it is to put together something because it is kind of the media watchdog and they have to watch all the news. You know, I whereas know. A lot of news organizations get to focus on just what they're doing. We got this long video tour of all the people working on this show. It's I love how they set up the team that watches news all day long right. with blood right. under blood their, coming eyes. Out of their yeah. eyes. And the editors in a dark room like trying to chip themselves away <laughs> to like daylight. So yeah. I thought it was a really great way to tribute, uh, you know, to pay tribute to the people that work it on this It was very, program. very clever. And how has Jon Stewart changed late night television? What is it's, his legacy? It's remarkable. You know, when this show, when he first took over, it had over just maybe 300,000 viewers a night. Then it's gotten up to as high as 1.5, 1.6 million. More people watch his show than a lot of the new shows that are out there, Amazing. frankly, on cable. And so, you know, it certainly has his rivals that make more. Some people say they get their news from John. A lot of people <laughs> do. And, you know, it reached young people in a way that traditional news sources have not been able to do through humor. And also, you know, there have been amazing news events that he he was there to cover. You know, hanging chads, the Bush, the Bush, Bush presidency. You know, there's a lot of great moments that they've been able to chronicle and really reach people in a unique way. It's really This show used to be kind of fake sketches and kind of cartoony, and he really turned it around into be real analysis of and what's happening. And let's talk a little bit about what comes next, because Trevor Noah, right. Noah his successor, did make right. a cute little cameo as well. He did. Well, he was measuring, measuring the, the desk. desk with a tape measure, kind of like, can you give me 20 more minutes, he said. <laughs> it's interesting, because as Jon Stewart has gotten older, his viewer has gotten a little older, too. So mm -hmm. I think Trevor Noah, who's 31, is a very calculated approach to appeal to a younger viewer. Um, this show is already very popular on social media, Twitter, Facebook, viral videos, YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I think that's appealing to that. And of course, many of the staff will still be there. So you're going to have a little bit different. He doesn't want to try and be Jon Stewart. How no do you think he's going to change it, though? What do you think he'll do? Well, his sense of humor is going to be different, but I still think they're going to analyze the news in the same way. He's just going to deliver it a little bit differently with his own signature style. Because right. to do anything but be your authentic self um, is going to be a mistake. Absolutely. Truthfully. And a lot of those writers are going to be there, those people with the bloody eyeballs watching the news are still going to do that and I think it's going to be a learning curve too you know they're going to try things some of them will succeed and some of them will fail they just have to hope that the viewers stick around for it truthfully. absolutely well yeah. it will be fun to watch yeah, for sure Brian Baltazar thank you so thank much you. for joining us